Good evening. Welcome to worship on this uh, Ash Wednesday service as we begin the season of Lent and continue following our Lord as we have during the season of Epiphany and each and every day we follow him on his way to the cross where the sin um, that stains our heart, the sin before God that we come before with today, that he um, takes that all on himself. As we read in the epistle, he became sin who knew no sin for our sake that we might become the righteousness of God. And in that, this evening, we gather to hear his word, to be reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return, and to be granted release from all of the things that burden us. For our Lord says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so I pray God's richest rest, rest for you this evening. As uh, we prepare our hearts for worship, I invite you as you're able to stand as we sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In those days, at that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek the Lord their God. They will ask the way to Zion and will turn their eyes toward it. They will come and bind themselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. When my heart was grieved, and my spirit embittered. I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength in my portion forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for Ash Wednesday is from Joel, chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and let the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. We read Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my inequity and cleanse me from my sin. <clears throat> Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Behold, I was brought forth in inequity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with hyssop, and thou shalt be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequities. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Thank you for that. We take the epistle from 2 Corinthians, the 5th and 6th chapter. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, in a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we command, we command ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, laborers, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love. By truthful speech and the power of God with the weapons and righteousness for the right hand and for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. way to give glory to our Lord for his word and for his works, I invite you as you're able to stand for the reading of the gospel. Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. Let your word to me come near. Newborn life and spirit give me. Let each promise still my fear. Death's 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, For they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day. Yeah. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text for today is Psalm 51. This is the reading every Ash Wednesday when it comes around at the beginning of Lent, and it is a perennial accompaniment to that refrain that we get when we get the ashes on our forehead that we are dust, and to dust we shall return pulverized, dissolved into pieces, incinerated into ash, dust to dust. And it's always accompanied by this psalm that's about one of the hardest things on earth to do. It's one of the hardest things to do, and yet we know it is among the most powerful, even in our relationships with each other, admitting that we've done something wrong whether we call it confession or repentance, seeing our sin and naming it, admitting it, acknowledging it. If you ask some attorneys that deal with mediation, it's amazing how many conflicts where people are coming in wanting their pound of flesh get resolved when someone is truly contrite. And most of all, what we want when we're wrong is to know that they're sorry a lot of times, even if it's hard for us to believe that. Because when we see that sin, as the psalmist does, is offense against the author of all goodness, then, and only then, it floods in that the goodness of the Lord is precisely the place that we need to go, where all of our sin is lifted up and done away with, and we are granted what we long for the most, release from these burdens. The psalmist starts with this goodness of God. He's confident in it, even though he has this searing confession the whole psalm long. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. The only way that he can confess his sins is he knows that his Lord is faithful, and faithful especially in his love for him. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, that you have more than enough grace for me, the person who does confess their sin in this way, in this free way, holding nothing back, no sorry if I hurt you, making no excuses, blaming no one but themselves, is the person who knows that God is truly able to do away with sin and make a completely new person out of a sinner, create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is the powerful, releasing love of God. And it is where the psalm starts. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. Because to see God in this way, as the author of all goodness, as the one in whom there is abundant love, more than enough for you and me and for the world, is to also see sin the way that he sees it. It is to notice, first and foremost, the, stark, the starkest of contrasts between my own heart and his heart as he's revealed it to me. For I know my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. What a haunting prayer. We do not need to surround ourselves with defenses and barricades in this case. We don't need to fear the truth and hide in lies told to make ourselves look better either to ourselves or to other people to exhaust ourselves trying to live out a life that seems perfect to others lest they discover that we are not what we appear to be, that we are sinners. The goodness of God lets us know that where there is an offense against goodness, there is but one place to go, to be restored, cleansed, and so the psalmist prays, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, and it is maybe the most startling part of this psalm that he prays that line, because we know that most often our sin <coughs> involves other people. We don't just sin against God, we sin against one another, and so if you were to hear someone who had hurt you, 
or hurt someone you love, pray to God against you. You only have I sinned. If you're anything like me, you might get pretty angry hearing that. We know because many times our own sin is triggered by sins that we notice other people commit against us. We live in a world where it's not just me that's a sinner. I'm surrounded by sin. And you might get pretty angry at that. And the psalmist admits as much when he says, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. His birth he had nothing to do with. A condition he had nothing to do with and yet still confesses just as much that this too is my sin before God because he maintains that God alone is justified in his words and blameless in his works, his judgment. As the author of all goodness, we don't pray this to let ourselves off the hook. We're admitting when we do sin against one another so that we can be insensitive to the harm that our sin causes to other people. We pray that this way is because to know sin is to know it as an offense against God. We make mistakes, we commit crimes, but to commit a sin is to know it as an offense against the one who made us, the one who redeems us. The more we get caught up then in comparing our sins with other people, the less we're able to see the need that the psalmist expresses over and over again. Cleanse me, blot out my transgressions, give me a new heart. Because when we just look around at other people, we can say we look clean enough, right? It's enough. I don't need a washing today because it's often precisely when we try and measure our sin against the harm that we notice that we get really good at the game of letting ourselves off the hook. The harder it gets to see your own sin, the more that we just see the distinctions between us and other people. The sin that separates us from God will separate us from one another even quicker. And the place where this tendency to compare really blows us away, though, like so much dust, is that it takes our eyes off of the author and perfecter of our faith, the one through whom God showed us what his heart looks like for us. Jesus Christ, the one who knows our hearts, whose Father hears in secret. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Because it is before this one, the author and perfecter of our faith, that we know the only release that we have in this world from sin with a capital S. Now the psalmist prays with a confidence that you will rarely find in the world. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. From this depth of woe, he then says, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. All of this about God drawing him back, the confidence he has in it. Create in me a clean heart. The power of confession before God is that it alone has the power to release us of these burdens of our sins. The fact is that we live in a world so stained by sin. Everywhere we look, we see it. The burdens of living in this world lead us to feel like a lot of times we end up shouldering more than it was ever given us alone to bear. The same one who creates a clean heart in us said to his disciples, says to us during this Lenten journey, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Because of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. All the burdens that you and I feel day by day, all the burdens that we inflict on one another, all the burdens that other people inflict on us were all suffered by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Because he loved us enough to grant us release 
And he comes to us again and again, just as he came to those terrified disciples after the crucifixion, saying, peace be with you. He showed them the marks in his hands and his side, and he said, here I am for you. Just like he did in your baptism, when he said, this life is one I claim forever. Just as today, he comes to us with his body and blood, uniting us with that communion of saints, uniting us in his body, that we would know the release of having our burdens borne by him. It is that release, the rest from this compulsion that we often feel like when we're about the business of measuring our sin, when we're about the business of trying to shift our burdens from one person to another, to feel like it is for us to hold it all together. But that's our job, to keep everything together, to keep it from dissolving, from falling apart, to have the answer to every question before it's asked, to know the plans that God has before they come about. It is this release, this surrender. We follow the one who surrendered his body to the grave, who laid down all defenses against sin, that the sin of the whole world would be allowed to invade his body for our sake. God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This release is nothing less than life from the dead. It is our hope, our peace, and our life now and always that God was faithful to his son and didn't leave him in the depths of woe but raised him from the dead so that we would know what our future by faith in him is like. The last line is an interesting one in Psalm 51. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. It's interesting that the only way in the psalm that he learns what it is to know this release is to encounter this one who gave his life for him, this Lord who is steadfast in his love, abundant in his mercy. And it's the same way that he teaches us today. By coming again and again, we encounter it through one another, but it always points back to him. It is the release of knowing that there is one who has the power to renew our hearts, to cleanse us of the stains that are sins that plague us, and to give us a new one. So that even as from dust we came and to dust we shall return, we know that that is not our end because of the one who became sin for us, in whose hands all things hold together. In the name of Jesus, amen. I invite you as you're able to stand as we respond in faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. To our prayer this evening, we have two additional petitions to lift up. One is in Morning on behalf of uh, the best family whose longtime friend Stephen died this week. We pray in particular for his two little girls and his mother as they mourn his death. We lift up also all the people of Ukraine that the Lord would restrain evil, that he would comfort all those who flee, and that he would work all elected leaders and all those with political responsibility into the way of peace. We pray. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins that we may obtain the promises that you have laid up for those who are repentant through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy steadfast love. According to thy abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in thy sight. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stripes, we are healed. O God, since the days of old, your people covered themselves in sackcloth and ashes as outward expressions of inward guilt, remorse, and repentance for sin. And though we are confident that the blood of Jesus saves us, we still heed your call to reform our lives seek true righteousness, and turn from our sinful ways. Make our reception of these ashes reflect hearts broken by guilt and ready to turn from sinful ways through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite everyone to be seated. We'll start uh, in the same way we'll do communion. We'll do it row by row, starting with this side and followed by this side. Come forward for the imposition of ashes. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I lay my sins on Jesus. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The spotless Lamb of God. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. He bears them all, and frees us. From the Remember that you are dust, to dust you shall return. I bring my guilt to Jesus. Remember that you are dust, to dust you shall return. Wash my crimson stain. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In this blood most Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. A spot Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I lay on Jesus. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Dwells in him. He Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Jesus, my Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. He from them all Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. My Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thank you. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
Remember that you are dust, and to dust we shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust we shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust we shall return. Jesus, Remember that you are dust, and to dust we shall return. Like fragrance Remember that you are dust, and to dust we shall return. His name abroad Remember that you are dust, born. and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. What's that? Oh yeah, please do me. I invite you to stand as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Hosanna, O Hosanna, O Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his perfect and eternal testament. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this blood, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. I invite you as you're able to stand as we sing. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, that you have nourished us with bread from heaven, the very body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that throughout this holy season of Lent, we will learn to be sorrowful for our sins and confident in the pardon and peace you so lovingly grant us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. May he protect you from all evil and grant you everlasting life. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.